Hi, friends, and welcome to another episode of Secrets from the Saddle. But before we get started, I have some coaching announcements. Now, they are wrapped around fitness for cycling and cycling skills. Now, the first one is I am going to be launching an online fitness membership, and there's going to be cycling involved in there too, but not till the fall. Now, what it's all about is like cycling is great, but we certainly need to think about muscle development and strength for strength, power, and speed on our bikes. And what's better to do is to work out with weights and bands and get start developing those muscles. So for you guys, this is super special. Get on my VIP list so you get a great deal on the first time membership. Go to cyclefitness.online, get on the list and you're going to get a great deal. The next one is my cyclingskillspro.com and these are my online cycling skills programs. So I have a four hour cycling skills intensive. You get all the things you need to know to be, to really improve your cycling and exponentially become a more efficient and economical cyclist. Then, or you can do it in a four hour, you can do it a four week, or you can get a downloadable module where you can just do it at your own pace and use this code pedal to get an extra $50 off with that. Have an amazing episode and enjoy the interview. All right, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Secrets from the Saddle. So host Sylvie Dow here, and I'm super excited to bring my friend, my new friend, actually acquaintance that I didn't even know about through We're the- friends now. Well, I know, but now I really got to get to know him is Sean Clark. Now, Sean Clark, now the thing is that we are both in the cycling world, obviously, and we're sitting in a coaching course that's been the, for the last three weeks. And I'm like, hey, I should just be getting everybody in the course onto this podcast. So you're going to be seeing a whole bunch of different coaches from across Canada and actually into Europe here. So you better stay tuned and make sure you subscribe and share with your friends. So let's hear about Sean. Um, and we are going to definitely dive into uh, more. And Sean's going to tell us his story because I can't wait to hear it all. Um, all right. So here's his bio. Uh, Sean started with alpine skiing coaching in 2001 and has built a life around the sport. So that's like 20 years. Just for everybody. And he looks, look at him. He's pretty young looking. So we have to think it. So my first question is, how old did he get started? But he's going to answer that later. Okay. <laughs> Years of coaching both skiing and cycling have allowed him to excel in the technical and tactical side of coaching. And that's one of the parts that I absolutely love uh, myself. He is quickly becoming one of the most broadly experienced coaches in the ro uh, road cycling in Canada. From grassroots grassroot cyclists all the way through to the national team at the elite World Champions, ch World Championships, Sean has seen all aspects of the sport and has unique perspective to help athletes anywhere through their difficulties. Development, same thing. Some, sometimes <laughs> both. Sometimes both. <laughs> um, currently the head sport, uh, sports director, um, or director sportif, as they like to say, um, of the InstaFund La Prima UCI Pro Continental Women's Team. Say that like five times fast. He leads some of the national's fastest cycle uh, racers all over the world. Locally, he's worked with the OBC Youth Program before becoming head coach of the OBC, oh, sorry, the OBC Youth Program. Um, before he came the head coach of the OBC Junior Racing Program. Um, over the years, Sean has worked with uh, personal clients from all sides of the sports, masters, athletes, competing at Oat uh, Grand Fondos, uh, junior, um, junior racers for world championships, pro cycling racers around the world, and local athletes ripping up the race near you. So it sounds like I might need your help. But welcome, Sean. I'm super duper excited. Now, my first question is, how old were you when you started in alpine skiing? And then you could take us through your 
uh, racing. Ra racing or coaching? Because I started racing, racing well, myself. Start uh, yeah, so I started racing at six years old um, in like the Nancy Green program, which is like a very fun recreational. Uh, I started at Packingham. And then oh, at a certain point, yeah, Packingham doesn't have the vertical you need or the steeps <laughs> you need to really progress. Um, so that our family moved um, to ski racing at Calabogie. Um, so we stayed okay. on the Ontario side in, in the region. Uh, my sister and I both were big into ski racing and my parents are huge ski nuts. So it was just our winter sport. We didn't play hockey. Uh, we, we ski, ski raced. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. I'm a big um, downhill skier too. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, you gotta do something in the winter in Ottawa. So, uh, and that was sort of where I was most competitive. I always, uh, biked and bike raced, but, uh, ski racing was my, my like passion for, for a while. Um, the thing with ski racing is by 16 or so, if you're not on the track to get on the national team, um, you know, the, there, there is ski racing for you, but it's the numbers really drop off. The competitiveness really drops off. Um, so you end up being a coach super early. Um, I wasn't going to make the national team um, based on my skiing, but also the funds from our family. It's uh, one of the most expensive sports there is in Canada right now. Um, yeah. So it, it just it wasn't. It, it, it was, I started, I took my first coaching course for skiing and then the next winter at 17, um, I, I started coaching and my first year coaching, I couldn't even drive myself to the hill. My parents had to drive me. I didn't have my license yet. So that's how young I was. And I was put in charge of all these little kids, um, who were not much younger than I was. Uh, and that's where my sort of coaching began. Um, yeah kind of fun when you see the full circle right yeah and now i've been coaching ski racing for so long athletes that i was coaching are now sort of like taking my position at the hill right. uh and yeah it's, it's it's weird to be uh above that you know and there's like yeah. now kids that might the people that i coached have coached athletes that are in and now coaching again and it's like this weird like and then they're bringing their uh, kids on table <laughs> yeah yeah, exactly. I know. My kids were in Nancy Green last year. And I was like, oh, this is so fun. Because I'm like, I've always wanted to race. I'm like, is there a master's race? And then my older daughter is a ski instructor, but not for the race. Yeah. Group. It's an amazing, yeah, so. amazing way for kids to grow up, I think. Absolutely. And it's one of those sports uh, that's really family oriented, but you also get mm -hmm. your freedom. You know, you go every weekend, you go to the hill as a family, which is really good for family bonding. But then when you get to the hill, you can, once you're at a certain level, you can leave mom and dad and you can have your own adventures with your buds, yeah. uh, which is really good for self-development. And then you meet for lunch with your family, which is um, some of my finer moments uh, that I remember with my family is uh, on the ski hill. You know, like it, there's just, there's the nice mix of independence and the, the family side. So, yeah, and I yeah, think it, was, they, it was a great way to grow up. The kids really liked that too. Um, and I found my like my kids never had a hard time doing the full day. You know, I'd wait there for them and I'd see some kids coming in <laughs> screaming because it's so cold. Man, the, yeah, the lifts don't run long enough some days. Yeah. You know? So how did you progress from downhill skiing into cycling? Okay, so that's chapter two, I guess. So yeah, so in the summer, yeah, so in the summer I was always um, biking and bike racing. My dad was a big cyclist, but never a racer. Uh, so I'd always tag along with him either at the end of his ride when I was little or full rides. Um, and then when I got older, he would tag along at the start of my rides. Um, but yeah, so we would ride a lot uh, just generally, and he would always build me these road bikes up with parts that he had left around. Um, and then at a certain point we started doing the Almont bicycle club time trials, um, yeah. cause we lived in Canada. They were easier to hit with traffic than the downtown ones. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a more interesting course too. If anybody from Ottawa hasn't done the Almont ones, I'd recommend Isn't it. Isn't that 40 K though? 
No, they have a 15K on Tuesdays. Oh. Um, and it's, <laughs> okay. it's, it's quite rolling. Uh, and it's pretty fun. It's, it's, a, it's a good course. Uh, it's not the flat uh, course we have at OBC. But anyways, so I started doing that. I don't know how old I would have been, 12 to 14, somewhere in there. Oh, okay, so a little um, bit of overlap. So yeah, lots of overlap. Uh, that was my summer sport. Um, yeah, so 15Ks. I mean, even pretty young, I was doing the 40Ks, which probably doesn't fit into the LTAD, but I loved it and I'm still at it. So <laughs> it obviously didn't hurt me. Uh, and then, so I think it was my last year cadet who started doing a few, um, few road races, a few crits. Um, and kind of got into it. And then Don Moxley was running a junior program at that time, not associated with the OBC. Uh, I don't know what happened. There was like some political stuff, um, mm. but he was still running a junior <laughs> program. And when I went to junior, I went full into road racing with Don and a few other guys from town. Um, and it was super fun and I, I loved it. My 100% focus was always ski racing, mm. but uh, I was really into to road riding and I really liked the tactical start, uh, side of it. Probably could have trained a little bit more, but. Uh, so did, um, so did you get into road racing like with Don a lot? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So before that I had done the, the cycle cross in the fall. Um, I had a mountain bike and I just ripped on my mountain bike by myself yeah. mainly. So we lived in Canada, so the Canada Lakes trails were a bikeable distance for me. Um, and then cyclocross was like super fun. But I didn't take it seriously, just like when I <laughs> had fun. But we, we did some of the crits as a cadet, I remember. And then when, when I joined with Don, it was, it was pretty serious. Like we were down in Southern Ontario most weekends. Yeah. Uh, we were doing some races in Quebec. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's like just about every weekend as a junior from whatever it is, April till September, we were racing somewhere um, and then all the local races the crits on Tuesdays time trials on Thursdays the 40ks uh once a month TTs wow. um, so yeah it, I know, he's, pretty, a, he's a good and he's a good coach uh amazing coach and like you just look at his track record of who who he's produced that's gone on to great things and it's pretty incredible um yeah great guy super fun coach to be around uh, knows his stuff. Yeah, I was, it was sad when he stopped coaching in the region. Yeah, I think he'd had uh, had <laughs> enough. Or Man, it was he, time, well, he, and I he didn't know it was what, time for him to retire, too. Like, I mean, yeah, just, he, didn't like, know, not, he didn't know the region anything. Like, he needed to take his own time, for sure. Yes, he, that's, his, I think that's it. Bit. That was yeah. part of it, like a big part of it. <clears throat> just to start taking back and just riding. <laughs> I don't think he got yeah. to ride yeah. a whole lot. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. So when I started as a junior, he rode with us. And uh, I tell that to some kids that are younger than me who went through Don. They're like, what? He rode with you? Because it was like, I don't know, like 15 Until years he got after too that. Fast, he like, I'm sure. He would, he would like drive around behind. Yeah. Because he was, yeah, it was, I was part of the Don riding era, which is cool. Wow. I convinced him to coach me one season. <laughs> Yeah, how'd that go? It was really good. Um, yeah. Yeah, because he never, I don't think he coached any masters, anybody. It was just the kids. And I'm like, please. Yeah. Don. <laughs> but I learned a lot from him. Um, yeah, he is a, he you definitely learned how to train me. under Don. If yeah, there's anything you learn, it's how to train. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, he's very technical too, but not like too much. Like he just knows enough. He knows enough. Yeah. He knows a lot. Over, and, um, over 50 years, he had it pretty dialed. Or whatever yeah, yeah, exactly. And, um, and I imagine you spent a lot of time on the track, too, because that's where he... Uh, I didn't, actually. Um, well, maybe at the time he wasn't... Um, was that OBC no. era when he started going to the track a lot? Yeah, it must kids? have been. I think we had limited funds because we weren't with the OBC, and it was all based on our, our parents' time. Um, so oh, okay. focused on the roadside. Also, the track might have been more of a winter thing, and I had I would go back to ski oh, racing. Oh yes, so yeah, yeah. Maybe um, <laughs> it's long enough ago that I don't actually remember what the other guys were doing. But um, yeah, may, maybe they were going to the track uh, in the winter down to London. 
Um, yeah, and I think he um, also like Pan Ams would have been like part of track too. I know he took uh, mm -hmm. kids there to train for that, but yeah. So okay, so now you're a junior. <clears throat> yeah. What do you do? Racing bunch. Yeah, racing, racing a bunch. Who'd you race with? After Don, uh, the or... junior team. Oh, uh, with with Don, it was um, Bike Race Ottawa. So the guys who organize Preston oh, Street. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, yeah. Just sort of like put a club together for me and oh man was it like 400 guys no girls uh, unfortunately <laughs> at the time why is that not surprising uh, uh, yeah for girls. the time it's it's not not surprising but yeah um actually we did have a girl with us but she was on another team uh lynn wolfson um and she was awesome she's probably my, out of everybody who like i would consider a mentor she's like the one who sticks in my mind the most she was awesome yeah. Um, but yeah, so it was under Bike Race Ottawa for junior. Our sponsor was Pub Italia, which is like totally not allowed now for a junior <laughs> racing team. Um, oh, come on. Yeah. It's a restaurant. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> no, it was, it was sweet. Like we didn't get any beer. Out of it. I don't know if they got beer out of it, but um, we definitely did not. I met um, the owner one day, actually. Um, it was around uh, Preston Street time and I, I walked in there and they're kind of like around the bar. Oh no, I know, not there. We were, I was going down getting coffee down the street and there was like these three guys and I was in my kit and they're like, we started chatting and one of them's the owner from pub. One of was his buddy who worked for the government and then there was another guy and I'm like, oh, hey. Yeah, that guy does tons for cycling in Ottawa, like behind the yeah. scenes. Um, I've never met him, but I'd like to shake his hand sometime for sure. Yeah, it seemed like a really cool guy, funny. Yeah. Funny guy. Yeah, so, I, I would imagine. <laughs> so did yeah. you progress into like a pro team or like? No. Um, so there, there actually wasn't much for U23 in Ottawa after that. So that's kind of how I met Vince at the Cyclery is. Um, oh, okay. There was really three guys on the junior team who were pretty serious. Um, me, Robert, and Brooke. Brooke went to Worlds, um, Robert got an engineering job, uh, or went to school for engineering, and I just kind of continued on my own. Um, so Brooke went on to a pro team, Rob kind of, not quit, but like stopped, um, and there really wasn't anything for me. Um, so Vince just sort of took me under his wing, uh, gave me a bike, uh, gave me some kit, and drove me to a bunch of races. Uh, so I was, I was by myself, but I was well supported. Um, yeah. so I have, Vin I have Vince to thank for continuing me in my career. Um, yeah, so that was basically my U23 years. I was ski coaching, racing. Uh, I went to college for tool and die making. Uh, I was working another part-time job, and ultimately I just sort of burnt out. Um, I didn't really get very far in the sport at U23, oh, no. uh, and I just I couldn't I couldn't handle all those things together. Um, yeah. So when I graduated college, I just took a year off of everything and I went to Australia and worked for a year. I didn't, I didn't oh, bike, wow. I didn't ski, obviously. Um, and just like, just uh, got pretty, pretty rolly uh, and sat on the beach. Uh, <laughs> got a good pretty tan. rolly. Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you come back. Yeah, I don't want this to turn into a, a body uh, body shaming thing or a weight thing, but I, I hadn't because like I, I'd been riding so much as a since I was a kid that I hadn't really like developed much. Um, yeah. So I left at like I think I think I was racing at about 146 pounds, 147 pounds, and when I came back from Australia, I was uh, almost 190 pounds. So I, I was going to the gym. But I put on a lot of weight, uh, mus like a lot of muscle, and uh, my body fat went up from about. Uh, I had a skin fold um, uh, before I left, and it was like I think I was about three or four percent, just because I was like oh my a young gosh. guy, and yeah. I did not get a skin fold when I came back. But it was probably, <laughs> you're like uh, I'm okay. I kind of have an idea. More. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now I got to get back so, on my bike. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I bet you yeah, it's the best so was, year of your really life, good. though. It was it was needed for sure. Um, yeah, yeah, it was great. I had a great time. Um, 
Uh, actually, now thinking back, sorry, this is going out of uh, at a chronological order now, but um, the west of west of Quebec Wheelers did have a U23 team for okay. one year for us, um, and that was like the best thing ever. I was just it was my last year of U23, and the burnout was already happening. Um, okay. And maybe my one regret in sport is that I couldn't capitalize on that year because we went to a lot of really cool races, uh, and they they threw a lot of support behind us. Um, and one of the guys went off to race in Europe um, from that team. Mm -hmm. And for sure, if I wasn't doing six other things and already tired from the previous years, like it, it was, like, they put together like really good support for us and a, and a really good program. And um, like that, that's kind of my, if you, if you call it a regret, it was still a great year and we had a ton of fun. And I still have a bunch of buddies that were still friends even off the bike now from that team. Um, but that's kind of my one regret that I didn't well, capitalize more on that year. John does a good job um, right here, you know. Oh, and the whole, good that support. whole, like, John was spearheading it, but the whole yeah. club kind of came in behind us, and they had photographers, and yeah. whatever we needed, we, we got, um, we had people driving us to races in the States that were, like, really far away, and, you know, just, like, guys would just pile us into their vans and drive us down. Oh, and, that's super you know, fun. It, it was somebody drove us to Lachine almost every Tuesday. Oh, okay. uh, so we didn't have to, you know, like it was, it was, it was awesome. Uh, it was, wow. it was what we needed. I just couldn't capitalize on it. Um, but yeah, so keeping things rolling, cause I don't know what I like to talk. I'm not sure if you haven't, if you've realized, but <laughs> well, I want to uh, get into coming back from Australia. Yeah. Uh, this is, this is the transition to DSing. So I'll make it quick. Okay. Coming back from uh, Australia. I didn't have much going on. I went back to Vince. Uh, he gave me a job at the cyclery. I was still roly poly, um, but I had a bike. <laughs> um, and, I start, and I didn't have a car at that time, so I was riding to work every day. Uh, and I started racing again. <clears throat> and I met a couple other guys racing the, uh, who worked at the shop. And we were all senior three still at that time. Um, so we decided to just like start a team. Uh, just, you know, like, let's, let's get some jerseys that match and let's do some races next year. And Vince is that where the cyclery us. group started? Yeah. And this oh, is like, okay. why don't we do something a bit more about this? Yeah. And we're like, well, I mean, we're happy just making jerseys, but if you want to do anything. So he found us bikes, he gave us jerseys, and he found a bunch of other guys to join. So it was supposed to be just uh, Luke Mahler, who runs the Movement Co. in town right now, Mike Woods, who you probably know. Oh, yeah. And Luke. I. He's awesome. So that... Yeah, so those were the three that was supposed to be, but then we got Mark Boudreau, who was like our Reggie Dunlop. He was our player coach. And then we had this guy, Sean Adamson from Edmonton, who joined. And we were like this, like, uh, yeah, like this team. pretty good team. So we all upgraded. So we weren't senior three anymore. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just started racing. And like anybody who's been around Mike knows that like he's uh inspiring and you ride well when you ride with him so that was that was a great year he got me back into racing um and then there was a sort of like a i don't know if it was ever a uci team but uh there's like a good a good team in town that started after that that we kind of moved to with js Perron, um called uh was that nine to five no that's no it was uh who was the main sponsor? sponsor. Marin Bikes and um, it became Lowest Rates team um, oh. and they did a bunch of racing, but uh, it was a physio place in Gatineau. Anyways, it was, it was a really good team. We had Emile Jean who went on to race for Silver and JS Perron who raced the, the Alberta World Tour race. So it was like super good team. Um, and from there I, I learned a ton uh, then the year later, they created two tiers. So there's like the, the pro team and the development team. Mm -hmm. And he brought me on to the development team to lead uh, the kind of younger guys. And I, I really liked that. Um, but again, I was starting to get a little burnt out. Um, <laughs> You're I like, oh my God, this aspect. is starting to happen again. <laughs> yeah, I just didn't like the training for, you know, like my eighth Charlevoix. You know, like I just... I couldn't get inspired, um, but I really enjoyed working with 
the youth and sort of teaching them what to do and just like seeing them making the mistakes I was I had made and like kind of like hey you know like I've been there uh let me help you out like that that part I really liked I just Mm -hmm. I couldn't train enough to be with them in the final final of some of those races right um so that's kind of where the DSing started where I was already like the the captain on the road and helping people out and organizing the trips you know like we'd go to a race and I'd be the one who would organize it um so I was basically DSing and riding at that point you know it's funny because like when you're you're describing like and I'm gonna have you describe like everything that you do as a DS like a director spots if I'm like Jesus that sounds a lot of what I used to do when I organize my woman's team i'm like yeah wow i used to be a director i felt like a mama bear more for sure <laughs> like uh, you know, it's like yeah. can i get I mean, i'll go and set everything up and you guys just roll in with your coffee and uh yeah i mean it's all about the athletes at that point and the more you can do the less they have to worry about and the better they can yeah. race so um it's like yeah like people ask like what does a ds do it's like what what don't we do you know like there's specific things that are um needed for our job and then once you're at the race it's just you do whatever you need you know like uh different races have different support so it's like sometimes you have a swine year sometimes you have a mechanic sometimes you'll have multiples of those sometimes you'll have a manager um but you're always just sort of figuring out who you can help and when and how you can do your job better but it's just all about supporting that those athletes. So you started as a DS for that junior team for cyclery or cyclery or no, not, not cyclery. Um, the OBC. Yeah. Oh, the OBC. Okay. So that's where it started. So you moved. Well, I mean, at the OBC, I was, I was a one man band, right? Like I was yeah. DS, I was mechanic, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was one year, I was mama bear, I was papa <laughs> bear. I was, you know, yeah, whatever, you know, like I've, I've recabled bikes in between stages. I've rebuilt bikes in between races okay uh, i didn't do you know, that and, but <laughs> and you're still like trying to figure out uh the schedule and logistics and timings and uh yeah so obc was the best thing that happened to me because it just gave me this huge breadth in the sport of like stuff i kind of knew but like now it was my job and i had to do it well right. um so I, I just got to touch on everything you know i was making training plans for everybody uh, race calendars for the entire team, um, managing the different riders and their expectations and their goals. Yeah, it, it was, I don't think I'll ever have that breadth in a job again, probably, unless I go back uh, in my later years. Um, <laughs> like when you come back to Canada, to, you ever come back? Yeah, yeah, so so that was awesome. Yeah, so, okay, so so then you started working for the women's cyclery team yes okay let's hear about that because they are one kick-ass women's team and that brought you to europe right best team in canada yeah for sure yeah Um, yeah. yeah, the the athletes on that team are they're all um yeah they're the best athletes in canada they're all so the cyclery is the um road team for the track national team so when they race on the road they race in cyclery colors and the year that i directed we had a few riders who were road only um but they were basically the same level uh but they just didn't ride the track okay Uh, yeah so it was it was awesome um again it was it was a little bit of uh doing a little bit of everything because when we went to some bigger races, we had a mechanic. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think we ever had a swan year. But yeah, you just like, you tried to organize everything and get everything sorted. Uh, and that was my first year directing. Um, and they brought me in to help out so that uh, Jenny True, who runs the Next yeah. Gen program and runs the cyclery with her husband, Chris, um, so they didn't have to travel as much. Um, so I, I, w- I went on the road with, with the athletes and yeah that was awesome she's um Uh, she's in milton now isn't she mm -hmm. yeah they used to be our neighbors in gatineau um so we always kind of knew them but we became really good friends when they were in gatineau her and uh her chris and and my partner keho uh yeah we we hung out all the time and yeah it was super fun 
Uh, but yeah, yeah, then they sadly moved to Milton and they've both been crushing it ever since. They both have awesome jobs down there and are making a huge difference in cycling. So oh, that's sad awesome. personally, but it was, it was a good move for sure. Okay, so let's let's talk about the director sports if. Um, yeah. And so it takes you. How did how did you get into working in Europe? Because right now you're stuck in Spain, which is a sad place to be stuck right yeah, now. Yeah, it's awful. <laughs> boohoo for you yeah i hear the cyclings you, you tell me the cycling's nice but yeah. yeah so tell me a little bit about that because i really want to know like you know some of the challenges there because this isn't just like a junior team anymore even though maybe dealing with parents is kind of like the same as like <laughs> take oh, on I don't deal with parents no i know i know but dealing with the parents when you were there kind of like maybe it's yeah. the same no, I didn't. Uh, I, I would did? communicate to the athletes. Um, and I, I would keep oh the parents gosh. informed. But um, hey. yeah, if if they, the athletes are going to perform in the sport, they need to be self reliant, and you learn that at junior. So if you spoon oh, cool. feed so, the, the parents, then they're not they're not going to make it. Uh, I think that was always oh, my I like that my motto. <laughs> yeah, Tom don't feed the up. bears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how did you get into Europe? Um, again, I, I owe it all to Vince, uh, everything in my I know cycling he's in career, he's in Europe all the time. Uh, I, I owe it to Vince. Um, so for a couple of years, Vince was just sort of a, a general help, um, to cycling Canada at the world championships. Um, and then one year, the year that I was running the cyclery, uh, maybe the year before, somewhere around there, uh, he couldn't do it. Um, and I was over here anyways, um, so he just put my name forward. Okay, how and did you get I was, up over I was there? in general. Well, my partner, Caroline, races for the World Tour team, Bulls Dolmans, which is going to be uh, SD Works next year. Okay, um, so I, I was just going to go over and hanging out with her. Uh, oh, basically. okay. All right. Yeah, which is why I'm in Girona right now, um, is because there was no racing domestically. So I just came over to spend more time with my, my partner, Carol. Um, but anyways, so Vince was supposed to be the help. He couldn't go that year. Uh, he put my name forward and I just showed up. And like the first year that I worked Worlds with Canada, I did airport runs at like 3 a.m. I did laundry. I washed bikes, you know, like just all the jobs no one really wanted to do. I just supported everybody and yeah. anything that needed to get done that no one wanted to do, Sean got to do. Um, <laughs> You're like, but but I, got, I got to work Worlds and I got to see how it worked. Mm -hmm. um, and I had already kind of started down that path. So it was, it was a great opportunity for me. Um, I didn't get paid. My accommodation was paid, I believe. I had to get myself there. So it was like sort of paying for my internship almost a little bit just to see how it worked. Right. Um, and then, so that was in uh, Bergen in Norway. And then every world since I've worked with Cycling Canada, uh, because I, I assume I did a good job and they wanted me back. Um, but every year I've worked my way up to have more roles and responsibilities. And then this past year in Imola, uh, I ran the entire thing. So I was general manager on the ground, head DS, um, and DS for the women's race. Um, so, I mean, that was pretty cool. That is pretty <laughs> I cool. Think. But yeah, I think but that's how I got into it. Is that you worked your way up to knowing all those jobs you know what i mean oh it was the best now i know how everything works you know yeah. so when i'm now that i'm running it I, I know yeah i know i know how long laundry takes i know how to get <laughs> how to get people in and out of the airports i know how to get how to support people for the training days i know how the training days work running into it because i was off, often the person driving people around um, this year, unfortunately, there weren't the juniors at Worlds. It was elite only. Yeah. Um, but last year, I worked with the juniors. So, um, yeah, it was it's it's it a little bit like the OBC. Like I got I got to see a little bit of everything, and now I kind of understand oh, how the whole thing works. Having said that, running everything myself was a huge shock, and understanding how it works, and then actually being the person who has to implement it are, are not the same thing. Um, and the first couple of days were a little bit bumpy. 
um, which was okay. And I'm happy that the athletes were pretty uh, accommodating early on, but uh, I had it figured out by the time the races were, were happening and it ran smooth. So yeah, That's good. yeah it was, it was cool. So what, what was one of the one things that <laughs> happened that you're kind of like, Oh my gosh. Like, what, did you have one of those moments? Like, it's like, Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, so well, like the first two days I was there, I was the only staff there. Um, so we didn't have any mechanics. We didn't have any soigneurs. Um, and I flew in from here, Girona, um, where I was basically on vacation. So I don't have all my professional stuff, nor am I a mechanic, nor am I a soigneur. So I don't really have that stuff anyways. So for the first two days, people would want to go training and they're like, how do we pump our tires? I, was like, oh, I didn't bring a pump. Uh, and they're like, oh. are, are our bottles ready? And I was like, did you bring bottles? Um, oh. so until, you know, like until all the other staff showed up, because the other thing too, is like this year worlds was super weird. Like there was races that were happening right up until like two or three days before worlds and then races happening two days after worlds. Cause the schedule was so condensed that yeah. normally you know, like Canada shows up, there's a pad, all the staff is there to receive the athletes and it's like super smooth. But this year, yeah, because yeah. it's like, well, our mechanic truck is coming from, uh, I don't, was it the Giro or one of the Italian races that actually didn't finish until the Tuesday, but right. the athletes were showing up on the Monday. Yeah. Um, so, so there's, yeah. So, you know, like I had to buy a pump at a bike shop and you know, like ask uh, we were, the team that we were sharing the hotel with for bottles and um, oh my god, yeah, just kind of make make it work. Uh, of yeah. all the things, so there was, there was a lot yeah, of moments after those first two days. It was like super easy and it was great. <laughs> but those first two days, we really had to um, just script things together, and make it happen. So, oh what do you mean you yeah. didn't bring your stuff? <laughs> yeah, like I like imagine just showing up to a hotel like as if you're on a non-cycling vacation that's yeah. what i had oh yeah, gosh like a, <laughs> i'd be like what yeah 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 uh, so that was yeah, this so that was, summer was fun. yep all right so did you have any challenges this summer or was it just a super short season for you for me, uh, I did Tour of Murrieta, which is like this really little race in California um, in, I think it was February, maybe it's beginning with the of The women's March. team? Oh, that must have been before with the, everything. With, with InstaFund. Yeah. So it was at the tail end of our training camp, um, like our, our sp uh, winter spring training camp. We did a race at the end and then I did nothing until Worlds. That, that was my year. Um, wow. because there was no like racing domestically months. in North America and yeah. um, InstaFund made, I, I think it was the right call, um, but at a certain mm. point they just made the call not to race this year. Um, yeah. It wasn't clear whether getting to Europe was even possible as a Canadian and then when it was, insurance was really weird and uh, races weren't sure whether they were going to run. So fairly early on they just made the call just, you know, in, instead of having all the athletes in a state of stress, wondering yeah. whether to be fit, uh, race ready. They, they just made the call really early not to race. And um, for sure, they missed out on some racing that they could have done. But I think uh, in, in, in the grand scheme of things, it, it was 100% the right, the right call to make. Um, yeah. Do you think a lot of athletes, like those girls, are going to come back stronger next year just because they've had a, oh, like yeah, a recovery sure. year? Like, yeah, and follow what they've been doing on Instagram or on Strava, and they just like they they didn't take the year off. I mean, they may not have raced, but they yeah, they, see the they intensity is not the in their off. body, but the stress. Yeah. So what's, and I'm sure next what's year next be for flying. you? Huh? Sorry. Uh, yeah, ne next year they're just going to be flying for sure. Um, <laughs> what's next for me? So you're resting now and getting ready. Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Um, I don't have anything lined up for next year. Uh, I'm not back with InstaFund again, maybe a little bit as a contractor. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for work over here right now. I'm trying to uh, become more of a full-time director uh, and mm -hmm. just make connections over here in Europe. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm in talks with a few different teams, um, but I have nothing to report at the moment. Um, oh. So hopefully I can, 
uh, either fill my days with contract work or land a, a fairly permanent job. But because um, you are working contract with Canadian companies. Yeah, Cycling Canada about? I was a contractor with, um, and I've got fairly good connections with a bunch of Canadian teams. Um, InstaFund is just sort of restructuring, so I don't have a full-time contract with them anymore, which right. allows me to go look for other stuff a little bit. So it'd be cool to work I'm with them still, because they're a great team. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just a little bit up in the air, and probably if we recorded this in a month, I would have like a pretty solid answer. And Well, I should, right uh, now, we should come like, back in like four months. Sort of like around April, March. Yeah, and I think hopefully I'm on the road somewhere cool. Yeah. <laughs> but see, that would be cool because if you could do an interview on the road and just, mm. and like a more of the visual, like, okay, so, you know, if I can't, if you do something like, you know, on a train, like, okay, this is like what we're doing, you know. So I, yeah. I like that too because um, you get the good visual about, you know what the person's actually doing and uh, yeah. that makes it it'll go one of two ways it'll either be like the coolest interview or i'll have this like big bushy beard i haven't left, <laughs> left the house no, in like no. four weeks i have i have no Do purpose it. in life anymore i don't know what i'm doing <laughs> oh my gosh john i cannot even imagine but i know like i i'm sure a lot of teams were forced to restructure just because a lot of companies went under um well, I, it's, I think for InstaFund, it was more the uncertainty that um, yeah. there's sort of a North American based team. And we're not sure if Canadians can travel to the States. So even if there is a right. season in the States, can they go? Yeah. Um, so that's like, yes or no. Yeah. Uh, if it's no, are they going to race in Europe? It sounds like they are. Is it better just to hire somebody on a day rate over here? Because they don't know what races they're going to get into. It's because it's a lot harder to get into races here. So I think so for them, it was just like work? a much more flexible situation. Um, right. What's that? Just on the last races? like couple questions there. Well, you were talking about, so here's a quick question. Um, how does it work when you're recruiting, um, I guess, racers? Well, racers. Like mm. you said, you take them on a date, on a per race be no, like, I meant for me, like, uh, as oh, for you, so staff, oh, okay. yeah, staff, you can bring people in on, on a day rate, uh, but all the athletes, because InstaFund's a UCI team, um, they have to have full-time contracts, and there's a pretty right. set contract that UCI yeah. puts out, um, but yeah, it's pretty standard, so the team is always the team, but uh, staff is a little bit more, uh, you can change it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Totally understand that. Well, this has been awesome. So if somebody were here, oh, well, I know my kids are going to show up soon. So you might hear a little clamber. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. well, this has been amazing. Thank you so much, Sean. Now, is there anything, because you're a coach too. Yeah. Do you have services? Like, do you coach others? Are you taking clients? Do you want to mention any of that? Sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> ma mainly based in Ottawa. That's where most of my clients are. I'm also a yeah, right. personal coach. Um, like you said in my bio, it's not only racers. There's a coach, master's yeah. athletes who are maybe interested in dipping their toe in the water in racing, but they have other goals. Um, some Grand Fondo stuff. I also mm -hmm. coach some U23 guys who are pretty friggin' quick. Um, a bunch of the younger women in town. I coach uh, just from my time in Vancouver. I've got a couple of athletes out there, but yeah, it's, it's mainly local people that I, I, I know fairly well. And I think I know the, the scene in Ottawa fairly well that I can create a, a really good plan for them. Um, for right now, I'm not taking any clients just until I know what my spring and summer is going to look like. Uh, yeah. If things are pretty bleak, I'd love to to coach more people and stay busy um but if i if i end up getting something my number one thing is like i really want to support the people that i coach and make sure i have the time to give them um yeah because i i think i mean with the suffer fest and training peaks you can you can always buy a plan but the the real thing with having a coach is that connection have them understand you have you understand them 
um, yeah. and really make like a personalized plan. And without mm -hmm. that, like, uh, I don't really want to do it. So uh, the athletes I have now, I know I have the time for them, um, no matter what happens in the spring. And yeah. uh, if I have something a little bit more part-time coming up, I'd love to take on a couple more people um, just to sort of give back and bring the level up in the region. Mm -hmm. It's uh, definitely well, a passion of mine. For everybody who's listening, you can always follow Sean on Facebook. I know he's on Facebook. Where else are you? Instagram, LinkedIn? Yeah, I don't, I don't have a website, um, but Shark Coaching is my coaching side of things. So it's on Facebook, Instagram. If you can find me on Twitter, I'm there, but it's <laughs> not, <laughs> yeah, you won't see All a lot from me. All his information uh, will be disclosed yeah. below so you can stalk him and inquire in the new year if he's taking clients yeah. if you're looking for a coach he sounds like a pretty informative person i love this the tactical stuff and we didn't get into like because i love talking about tactics like that was one thing mm. as a coaching i got to coach my team and and i always went in with like okay this is what we're gonna do and 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 you know, like nothing ever happens, but I'm like, we always had a yeah. plan though. <laughs> it's like the weather, important. man. You, you can be so wrong every time, but you just need to tell them <laughs> something beforehand. As long as we have something to think about. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, exactly. But I want to thank Sean. So with that, yeah, thanks a lot, so. everybody. So. Um, and we'll catch you later. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and provide comments and feedback. Um, on iTunes. Thanks a lot. Hey, thank you so much again for joining us for Secrets from the Saddle with Sean Clark. Wasn't that amazing? Now, don't forget that if you're looking for some cycling skills and technique, like, you know, how do you, how can you get better climbing up those hills? I have something for you. I'm going to put a link in the, in the bio go to, or you go to sylviedaou.ca and I have a 16 week pro, or sorry, backtrack. I have a 12 week program, a 12 week course that covers the skills and technique you need to apply while riding inside or outside. That's definitely going to take your um, cycling to the next level next year. So this is something you can definitely apply when you're inside. Uh, you're joining your friends on Swift. It's going to give you a lot of things to think about and things to implement when you're out and working those hills. So take a look, sylviedaou.ca. And if you have questions, comment in the bio and I'll get back to you. Take care. Bye.